According to Apple, the world is flat. Its new iOS 7 operating system has what it calls a flatter design, which is more minimalist and overall a lot cleaner than iOS 6. Here we're going to walk you through some of the newest features of iOS 7 and how they work. Uh, I have here uh, three devices, an iPhone 4S, an iPhone 5, and an iPad mini. The 4S is running iOS 6, and the other two are running iOS 7. As you can see, uh, there's a lot less shading on some of the icons, such as Safari, and they're, and they're a lot simpler, too. For example, instead of a little north, south, east, and west, it's just a little icon of the, of the two arrows pointing in each direction. Here's another example. The camera icon has gone from the lens to an actual outline of a camera. In some cases, we like it, such as with the camera. It's more of a uh, representation of what it is. But other, uh, other uh, icons, such as the Game Center um, or even Safari, if you didn't have the lettering underneath it, you might not know what they are. But overall, we like this flatter look. Um, it makes things really sort of pop a little bit more on the screen. And it does feel more modern. One feature that's been on Android devices for a long time, but is finally now on Apple's devices, are the notifications and more controls on the home screen itself. So if we go here and you swipe up from the bottom of the screen, you get uh, the ability to adjust settings on the fly, such as airplane mode, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, sleep, and then other things such as brightness. You can play songs and uh, even has a few access to a few apps. There's a flashlight, a timer, a calculator, and the camera. It's not as sophisticated as Android where you can actually customize these and control more of the settings, but it's a good start. Next, if we swipe down from the top, you can see notifications from friends from mail. Um, here's your calendar. It'll show you at the top that I have four, two meetings scheduled uh, for today. Um, apparently at the same time. And then if you scroll down, you can see stocks and other events for tomorrow. S switching over to all and missed, which are a little bit redundant, you can see uh, missed uh, Twitter icon, Twitter updates, LinkedIn, Facebook, and email. So this is nice to have it at a glance. Unfortunately, unlike Android, you can't respond in line here. You have to, it has to open up the respective app, but it's a nice addition to iOS 7. So multitasking also gets a little bit of an improvement in iOS 7 as well. Uh, if we go here in iOS 6, if you double tap the icon, the home button, you just get a, a little icons of all the apps that are currently open. However, in iOS 7, if you double tap, you get to see these little card views, um, somewhat like uh, Palm OS actually. And you can scroll through them and sort of see at a glance what you have up on the screen. Then if you want to quit one of the apps, you just simply swipe up and it closes it like so. And then if you want to open an app, you just press a button like press it and it pops open. It's a little bit of an improvement. We wish uh, iOS 7 had something more like the side view windows in uh, some Samsung phones where you can actually use two apps side by side. But this is an improvement um, over the previous version of iOS 6. Among the apps that Apple has updated for iOS 7 is its Photos app. Uh, which introduces a new way of method of organization by year and by location. And it makes finding photos that you might have had buried in the past uh, a lot easier to find. So, let's, so starting out, you have a view of all the photos that you've taken in the past year. Here it's 2013. And it sort of shows them in this sort of colorful grid uh, with the locations of all the places that I took the photos above it. And then if I were to press in some spot, let's say right about here, it'll zoom into that area. And here you can see um, these are photos that I took actually in San Francisco when I was out at the Apple event. So zooming in closer, I can press it again. And it gets even more granular to just Apple. And even and then we go down here and to moments. And that's actual photo from the event. And you can scroll through them as you would normally. And then you can zoom back out. And then if you were to press where it says Cupertino, California here, It'll actually put all the photos on a map. It's taking a second or two to fill in the map. But it's, but it's kind of neat in that you can see where your photos were taken or where you took those photos. Um, once again, scrolling back out. And then you can share them fairly easily, too, just pressing the Share button. You can share this in, the entire moment or just share some of the photos from that particular time. And once again, 
just select a few and share. And you can see the sharing options here. Um, unfortunately, the sharing options aren't as robust as on Android, which if you, say, add a new app to your, to your Android device, you'll be able to share it potentially with that, uh, with that app. Here on iOS 7, you're limited to what Apple thinks you can share it with. In this case, messaging, mail, Flickr, Facebook, and uh, iCloud. Um, still, it's a nice way to be able to get, transfer photos uh, and share them with others. Apple is taking on the likes of Pandora and Slacker with iTunes Radio, a new feature within iTunes Music that lets you stream uh, music right from the internet. Now, I'm going to take a quick look on how it works. So when you open the music app from now on, there's a little icon in the corner that says radio, and it has a bunch of stations, featured stations at the top, as well as your own stations that you can create at the bottom. Um, we've already created a few here, so let's pick, uh, say, Bruce Springsteen Radio. And it'll start playing songs that it thinks are in that same genre. For example, this one is Tom Petty's uh, American Girl, and you can obviously change the volume right here. And do other things as well, like if you like the song enough, you can uh, buy it right there. And then you can also create new songs based on this station or on this song as well. Allow explicit tracks and then, um, you know, fine tune your uh, uh, preferences as well. You can, here's another thing you can, and you can even say never play this song if you don't like it. Um, it's a neat little feature um, and it's going to be free if, with ads um, for everyone. And if you're an iTunes Match subscriber, you won't get any ads. Um, it's a nice little incorporation into iOS 7, and it could spell doom for other uh, music streaming services, but we'll see how that happens in the future. Anyway, so that was a quick look at some of the new features of iOS 7. There's a lot to cover, and it's a pretty good upgrade for people who are running iOS 6. We're not sure if on the whole it catches up to Android, but for people who are looking for a few new features and for a more modern look for iOS, for their iOS device, iOS 7 is a worthy upgrade.